This is Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network. Come on, let's all go to the lobby. Because people are staring at us listening to these shows while we're in the theater. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Last week, you may remember Flash Gordon and Dale Arden saved the Earth from destruction by shooting a rocket at a planet which threatened to collide with it. They became marooned on the planet called Mongo. The Emperor, Ming the Merciless, ordered Flash killed and commanded Dale to marry him. The royal princess, loving Flash, saved him. Foon! Prince of the Lion Men helped Flash prevent Ming from marrying Dale by breaking up the marriage ceremony and escaping underground. Now we continue the story. Flash and Dale are captured by the Shark Men. Princess Aura appears and again saves Flash, who in turn tries to free Dale. But Thune's father, searching for his princely son, captures the princess and Flash. Rather than remain a captive, the proud Aura hurls herself over a cliff, only to be caught by the terrible leaves of a constrictor plant. Flash hastens to her aid. I hope this is all very clear for you. Don't struggle, Princess Aura. I'll free you. Oh, hurry. The leaves are crushing me. I'll cut them with my sword. Oh, be careful. Oh, 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 careful, Flash. The plant may touch you. No, oh, this devilish, dirty plant. Oh. oh. There. Oh, Flash, it's got you, too. Yes, your hand has got me as well for a second. Yes, I didn't think it could. I think that's a tough break. What shall we do now? I don't know. Yet. Oh. Oh, Flash. What is it, Princess? Are you in pain? No. Look. Look down there. Out there, a door in the ship has opened. So it has. There's soldiers coming out with strange-looking guns. Are those your father's men? No. No, I, I never saw them before. Oh, actually, I, I might have dated him. Uh, and him. Oh, they, they must have seen us. Uh, uh, come and make us captives. Well, at least they'll get us out of the clutches of this terrible plant. Soldiers, attack that plant and kill it. But don't injure its victims. I want them brought to me alive. Don't be afraid, Princess. Those men will catch you. No. Oh. I doubt it. Be ready to catch her men. Now, the other one. Here I come. Ugh. We're safe on the ground. But what will happen now? It's up to the leader of those soldiers. Soldiers, you did well. Ah, Princess Aura. Yes. How do you know me? I do not know you. I'm your father. Oh? So what's this? Another stranger? Yes, Prince Baron. Blindfold him, and prepare our other prisoner for the ordeal of the poison daggers. As you command, Prince Baron. What are you going to do with me? I mean, can we do the blindfold and forget the whole poison daggers thing for now? Could be fun. God, take the princess to my quarters. As you command, Prince Baron. Ah, here comes our other prisoner. Perhaps you know him, youth? How can I tell? He's got a hood over his head. I can't see his face. Ah, I thought that was merely an ill-conceived hat. There, he has a face and says he is from Earth. I suppose, since you have a face, you are from there, too. I am? I don't believe you. Yeah? Say it to my face. I am. Literally. Right now. No matter. Our hiding place must remain a secret, so both of you must die. Are the prisoners prepared, God? They are, Prince Baron. Their left forearms are tied together. And the poison daggers. Are they ready? 
Um, I forgot the poison daggers. What? Again? Yes, I, I suppose I could ride the seven turns of the Mongol sun to get them if it's necessary, Prince Baron. <sighs> yes, of course. They are necessary. Very necessary. Go get the poison arrows post haste. Now listen, prisoners. When he returns a fortnight from now, I shall be dipping these two daggers in dragon's blood. The slightest scratch from these blades means certain death. Uh, checking. Uh, just the two poison daggers? The, the ones we put next to the keys? Yes. Yes. Look, never mind them now. Guard, give these semi-sharp unpoisoned computer dongles to the prisoners. On the count of three, you will commence fighting. One, two, three. As Prince Baron utters the words, Flash steps back, jerking his mysterious antagonist off balance. He flings aside his dongle, which bears no poison upon it. Then he causes his opponent to drop a non-poisoned utensil-like weapon as well. Picking up the used spork, Flash severs the cords, binding him to his opponent. As the two whip off their blindfolds and reveal themselves to each other. Flash Gordon! Dr. Zarkov, well, this is embarrassing. So you do know each other? Uh, no. I should say we do. I'm mighty glad to see you, Doctor. I thought you were dead after our rocket crashed on this planet. I was badly hurt, Flash. These fellows, they picked me up and brought me here. They made me act as their servant. Well, we saved the Earth, didn't we, lad? We certainly did, Doctor. Now, Prince Baron, maybe you'll believe that we are from Earth. This man was the most brilliant scientist in the world. He was... Stop! He was... Stop. My admiration for you both is boundless. I would be honored to have you shake my hand and call me friend. Your hand there? Yes. Shake it. Roughly. My yes, of course. Here's my friendly hand. And mine. Good. Put it back on my wrist stump. Now, come to my quarters. My friends, I have invented an electric mole with which I intend to burrow underground into the palace of Ming the Merciless and overthrow his tyrannical government. Uh, uh, seriously? Yes. Look, we found these mole parts in the enchanted Piedmont of Mongo. And once we did it, we kind of had to make that, uh, the, Ugh. The, the plan, you know. Because we started with the electric mole parts that Tony found. He's a buddy of mine, long story. Anywho, I thought maybe you guys would go along with it. I know it sounds uh, a little silly when I finally say it out loud now. <laughs> so, are you with me? You bet we are. We've, we've got to rescue Dale and Thune from that fiend. Princess Ara. You heard what I planned to do, Ara. Yes. Please, take me back to my father's palace with you. I want no part of that stupid electric mole plan. You! You! Why, it is because of you that I am a hunted man with a price on my head. You will remain as my prisoner. Come, my friends. Come. Oh, I will. Will I? Gord! Uh, what is it? What is your name? Ronkel, my princess. Your name is not Ronkel, my princess. No one's named Ronkel, my princess. You dare lie to me! Tell me your last name now! Do you know who you're talking to? Yes, my princess. I am the only princess here. Do you understand? State your name and stop lying that you are Mr. My Princess! Ronkel. You are Runkle. Only Runkle to me. I'm right. From now on, hey, I thought I recognized your face. You fled into exile from my father's guard when you were caught stealing. Yes. 
Listen, Runkle. My princess? Listen, Runkle, my princess. If you would help me warn my father of what those men plan to do, I will not only make you wealthy, but also a duke. For one so lovely as my princess, how could I refuse? Come with me. I will, Duke Runkle, my princess. Unaware of what happened in the hiding place and racing underground towards the palace of Ming the Merciless in their electric mold, Prince Beren, Dr. Zarkov, and Flash Gordon encounter a fierce Waco or armor-plated dragon in this run-on sentence. Flash climbs out of the mole and gives battle, saving his companion in a battle that frankly defies description. Let's just say it's fairly spectacular, for this show anyway. Then Prince Baron promises that if they succeed in overthrowing Ming, Flash will be made a Prince of Mongo, and everything he desires would be his. And I think you know what I'm talking about here, kids. So, finally, the electric mole breaks through the floor of the central hall in Ming's palace. The door opens, and three emerge from the metal burrowing machine. Come, my friends, we have arrived. Ah, so we have. What is our next move, Prince Baron? Hmm. hmm. This is the central hall of Ming's palace. We will go up those stairs, Dr. Zarkov, and surprise the inner guards. How will we startle them into examining their inner guards? I mean, that seems like a stretch, even at this point. Hark! Prince Baron, look! Ming's armored men! We've been betrayed. Yes. But... How could the news have reached here before us? You really want to know, Flash? Our hero, Flash, turns incredulously towards me, the announcer, and speaks with great indignation. No, I don't want to know how the news reached here yet. Let us get our ray guns. It's no use, Doctor. The armor of those soldiers is ray-proof. They seem completely scotch-guarded and impervious to even wrinkling Zarkov. Ah. Here comes Ming the Merciless with his high priest. No, Flash. Dale! Thank heaven she's all right. Welcome back to my palace, Flash Gordon. <laughs> and welcome to your companions. Soldiers, lash them to the pillar over there and execute them. <laughs> wow, nice way to greet us. Huh, really? You're, you're surprised? I'm Ming the Merciless of Mongo. The, the, the clue's in the name. Oh, Flash, darling, I love you so much. Dale, my dear, we did our best to save you, but we've been betrayed. I guess they have us now. Let them shoot. They will kill me, too. And we will be together forever. Both of you just give up? That's it? Oh, very well, Del Arden. You can have him in death. Captain! Sire! Proceed with the execution! Shoot, you dogs! We aren't afraid to die. Ready? Aim! Captain, hold your fire! Zogi, what is this? If, if you were not the high priest, I would have your tongue torn out for your insolence! I ask you to remember, sire, that according to the writ of the Pau, even a traitor has the right to choose between the firing squad and the terrible pit. Mm, true, Zogi. And on second thought, such death would provide greater amusement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sire. We must abide by the sacred writs. And I see no reason uh, why the girl should be killed. Mm, Captain, I bet you don't. Sire? Captain? Ming? Well, now that that is cleared up, Captain, release the prisoners. They shall undergo the terrible test. Bring them over to the pit of karma and unclear outcomes. All right, come on, move along. This is the test of the torture pit, Flash Gordon. You and Baron will stand at each end of this narrow platform and with long whips try to topple each other into the pit where a surprise will wait you. <laughs> Take your places. The two mount the platform. Flash ducks as Baron whip winds over his head. Flash's whip hits Baron with such force as to knock him off balance and into the pit. Dropping his whip, 
Flash leaps turgidly after him. As he throws the unconscious form of Prince Baron over his shoulder and prepares to climb out, a transparent metal sheet slides over the top of the pit, trapping them. At the same time, Flash hears a growl and, looking around, sees three snarling tigrons. Placing Baron on the floor, Flash turns on the fierce beasts. The first one charges, leaping high in the air. Flash comes down on the Tigron's back and with a powerful wrench breaks his neck. The other two Tigrons leap at each other to fight for possession of the body. Furiously, the battle rages. Finally, both animals are down, wounded unto death. Then Prince Baron regains consciousness, missing the whole thing, but puzzling as to why Flash is holding him so tightly. Oh, ooh, where... where... <laughs> Where are we? It's all right, uh, Prince Baron. Stand up. We're in the pit. But they've uh, trapped us with this uh, transparent metal lid. And you... You saved us from these beasts. Why, you are superb, Flash. You can let me down off your shoulder now. Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, that was easier than figuring out how we're going to get out of here. Look up there. I won't fall for that, Prince Baron. No, seriously, look. Like, Mongo, seriously. Oh! Prince Thun! <laughs> He's just in time. Thun, roll back that metal lid! He nods that he understands. There. He's done it! We are free! Come along! Meanwhile, in the Temple of Pau, Ming and Dale are about to be married by Zorgi, the High Priest. By now, Dale Arden, my savage saber-toothed tigrons have torn your tepid man among Mongo men into pieces, as mightily Ming the Merciless of Mongo relishes alliteration. <laughs> oh, poor Flesh. He died trying to save me. Nothing matters now. Here comes Zogi to perform the ceremony. Oh, mighty Ming, ruler of Mongo and the universe. Does the supreme intelligence take this earth woman to be your wife and empress of Mongo? I most certainly do. I wasn't talking to you. Zogi plays to camera much like Bob Hope in a world away from Mongo called Burbank. And you, Dale Arden, do you take this just and brilliant man to be your lord and master. I... I don't care what happens now. Sounds like you're ready to be married. Again, Zoggy plays the camera, much like Bob Hope, in a world away from Mongo called Burbank. As you have accepted each other in matrimony before the great god Pau, I pronounce... Wait, stop! The idol speaks! I, Pau, forbid this marriage. <gasps> what? What? It's, oh my God. It, it's, it's a it. trick. Oh Fools! A stone idol cannot talk any more than I cannot break the fourth wall in a scene. Zogi, swing back the statue. At once, sire. Flash! Gordon! Flash, darling, they told me you were dead. The Earthman and two companions arrive. Guards, shoot them dead! The marriage must go on! Wait, sire! The sacred writ says you cannot execute the man who has passed the test of Tigrons. Guards, drop your weapons or Pau will curse you all! What? You dare defy me? I only quote the sacred writ, sire. As high priest, it is my duty to interpret and enforce its dictates. Get it? Dictates? Arr. I get nothing. I will not endure any more of this pedestrian wordplay. God, give me your sword, Zogi. I will shut your jabbering mouth forever. Ah! Oh, how awful. He's killed the high priest. Carry his body away, guards. Just the body, sire? Oh, uh, and the head. I mean, obviously. Flash, my darling. I thought I'd lost you. Never as long as I have strength in these two arms and my breath in my body. So, Pau forbids me to slay you, huh? Well, Pau and I will both laugh while you rebel slave in the prison city of the Hawkmen. Death would be more desirable. 
As for you, Dale Arden, you shall be taught to act like my empress. Doomed to a fate worse than death among the cruel hawkmen. What terrifying adventures await our friends. Be sure to listen next week. And if you're the one who's actually listening, you will hear the further amazing adventures of Flash Gordon and Dale Arden. Hi there. Are you a fan of all things horror? Yeah, you are? Well, in that case, find Tuesday Terrors, which is the mutual audio feed that comes out on a Tuesday, believe it or not. Shock horror, I know. But if you subscribe there, you'll find amazing horror fiction audio in your player every Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday Terrors. Subscribe to the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.